Some Sadducees, those who deny that there is a resurrection, came forward and put this question to Jesus, saying, Teacher, Moses wrote for us, if someone's brother dies leaving a wife but no child, his brother must take the wife and raise up descendants for his brother. Now there were seven brothers, the first married a woman but died childless, then the second and the third married her, and likewise all the seven died childless. Finally, the woman also died. Now, at the resurrection, whose wife will that woman be? For all seven had been married to her. Jesus said to them, The children of this age marry and remarry, but those who are deemed worthy to attain to the coming age and to the resurrection of the dead neither marry nor are given in marriage. They can no longer die, for they are like angels, they are the children of God because they are the ones who will rise. That the dead will rise, even Moses made known in the passage about the bush, when he called Lord, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob, and he is not God of the dead but of the living, for to him all are alive. Some of the scribes said in reply, Teacher, you have answered well, and they no longer dare to ask him anything. The Gospel of the Lord. In today's Gospel, the Sadducees try to catch Jesus in a trap, which the Lord turns around, he wants to teach us something essential. The Jewish people who call themselves Pharisees believed in the resurrection of the dead. The Jews, who identified as Sadducees, a group from which the high priests were selected, did not believe in that resurrection. Jesus makes it very clear that there is eternal life, that God is God of the living, that for God, time does not exist. Everything is present because time is the succession between things, people that are changeable, and God is the eternal one. There is eternal life. It is our hope, but it is also our certainty. There is eternal life. We all have to face death many times during our life until the hour of our own death arrives. But until that moment, we have to face the death of so many beloved people. Some die because they are older. It is normal for parents to die before their children. Sometimes, on the other hand, that law of life reverses and it is the young who die first. The tragedy is immense, even greater. Other times, acquaintances pass away. Friends, people who were not much older than you. Of course, it often happens that the husband or wife is the one who dies before their spouse. We encounter death many times throughout life, and I'm referring to death that touches closely because naturally millions of people die daily in the world. Since the beginning of time, man has always had a need to know if everything ends when we die or if there is something more. Is there eternal life? This consciousness that we have of existing, this animal that knows he's going to die, who is the human being, he needs to know if there is anything after this life. We are the only animal due to our rational character that knows that we are going to die. That is why we are the only ones that need to know if we are going to live. Christ gives us the answer. 
There is eternal life. God loves you and waits for you. There is eternal life. He gives us that answer with his words as in today's gospel. Above all, he gives us that answer with his own resurrection. There is eternal life. Let us thank God. There is eternal life when death roars at you or wounds you or when the hour comes for you. Do not doubt this. There is eternal life. There is eternal life. That person who has gone has not said goodbye to you. He has only said until later. And when you leave, you will meet him and you will say to those who remain also a see you later. There is eternal life. God is waiting for us in heaven. Let us never forget it. Amen. Yes,